What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody out there? You are listening to Mo Brown Sugar, the Diva Brown Show. And I have an amazing show for you today, darling, because we have the fabulous, the beautiful, the chocolatey, the smooth, the sensual <laughs> Miss Coco Sarai. Hey, what's going on, everybody? <laughs> I remember the first time seeing you perform, you were laying on the floor and you was like, let it burn. No. And I was like, I am crying. Who, nobody don't make me cry. <laughs> really good, really good. First and foremost, tell us, where can we find Miss Coco Sarai? Where's your music? Where, who is this Coco? www.cocosarai.com You can find me on cocosarai.com. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, every other social network you can think of. As long as you can spell my name, mm -hmm. you can find me. This is an appearance for you, darling. <laughs> we don't want to just ask you boring questions. We want to know your favorite color. We want to know your favorite food. We want to know, Miss Coco, what's your favorite color? <laughs> right now, it has to what do, be. Wait, what do you mean right now? Because, because <laughs> my favorite color has changed over the years. It used to be purple. Royalty. And then it was yellow. And now it's pink. When was the moment you realized that, wow, I really want to do this? Can't think of a time when I didn't didn't know that singing was what I wanted to do. I remember um, um, graduating pre-K and um, there's video of it that I cannot find, but I remember seeing it a couple years ago and they're asking me, they're asking the kids, what do you want to be when you grow up, right? And so the lady comes up to me and was like, so, um, so you want to be a singer when you grow up, right? And I looked at her and I was like, <laughs> I don't want to be a singer. I'm already a singer. I want to be a writer. Yes. And I think it's funny, like, back then, like, even back then, that young, I was like, I already you sing. Knew. Right. Because I was singing in church every Sunday, so I was a little oh, celebrity. You were, you I was, was a singer. I was, <laughs> I was singing already. <laughs> so in pre-K. You was like, I'm flat out like, I'm like, I already sing. I, you know, I want to write. And I'm and true, true, to, true to, you know, art imitating life. Right, um, right. I'm definitely, you know, later on became a, a, a poet, you know, and then a songwriter. Why the name Coco? Is it your skin tone? Is it how your voice sounds and it makes you think of chocolate? Because chocolate's my favorite. Pause, you know. No. Oh, you better not. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but what um, made you choose Coco? My mom has called me chocolate all my life. She used uh -huh. to call me chocolate. And she, um, um, I lived in Baltimore for a little while and I moved back to New York. And when I did, I would walk down the block. I remember going to the store. Somebody was like, you chocolate, right? And I got <laughs> mad. Like, don't call me that. My mommy calls me that. Uh -huh. But I didn't realize she had told everyone about me before I came back up to live. Nice. And so everyone called me chocolate. So in my old neighborhood till this day, if I walk over on Bainbridge Street, they're like, chocolate, you still singing? You know, so it came from, it came from my mom calling me chocolate. Um, and Sarai is my middle name, mm -hmm. uh, which my grandmother gave me. And when it was time to pick a stage name, um, I, I was just going to use Sarai, and I called my mother, and she's like, well, why you can't be chocolate? I'm like, mommy, because I'm a stripper named chocolate, <laughs> right. so this is not going to work. <laughs> With them and, um, legs, girl, you you could get far. <laughs> Around the time I met you, Mo, is when I started wearing my legs out on stage, much less I said, give that girl some shine, some, <laughs> some sprinkle stuff for her legs. <laughs> Now that's my thing on stage. That's you know that's my sexy. My sexy is all up in oh, the, the calf muscles and the thighs. You should put some glitter on the calf. The glitter, uh, only no. <laughs> put the glitter on the calf. I put it on the kneecap. Like oh, it's blinking, it's blinking. We need Coco to sing her favorite food. Ooh. I tell you what I like. I want peach cobbler and some collard greens tonight. Yeah. Fried chicken barbecue. Oh, that's just my type. I like, I like all kinds of foods. Yeah, all kinds of foods. Yeah, red, red velvet cake. Uh, put some, put some, put some string beans on my plate. <laughs> Tonight, yes. don't forget the peas and rice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Where do you pull from? Where does your inspiration come from? Did, did, is it by a fireplace? Is it on your toilet bowl? Where do you pull from? I pull from um, any any um, extensive heightened emotion. Like if something makes me really, really, really happy. Um, it's a, it, I'm like really, really happy, and then my brain's like, ooh, 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 write a song right now because you gotta write it right now, or you're not gonna be able to like finish it and make the, uh, make sure that the language represents it in its full right, right. capacity later. So 
I wake up out my sleep out of a dream and write something, write down a line. Um, sometimes I get um, like concepts, you mm -hmm. know, like the concept for Criminal, which is a record that's going to be on the album. Um, the concept for Criminal, I had already written it down. And then I heard the beat and I was going through concepts because I couldn't think of anything right away. And I was like, oh, there it is. Got it. I'm going to use that, you know, because concepts come to me more often than anything in poetry as well. Mm -hmm. So I pull from just all of the things around me. Um, my favorite place to write is on the train, actually. Interesting. And yeah, I write on the train all the time. So I'm definitely the girl. Stuff all the time. Yeah, and just different, so many different types of people. If you look in one train car, there are so many different nationalities, so many different um, ages, and, and you know, just demographics. Yeah. Everybody's on the train, you know. And I like to look at people, and sometimes you can tell a story. You know, you assume a story from looking at someone. Do you have any projects that you're currently working on? The Black and White. My album comes out tomorrow. Yay! The black and tomorrow! White. Black tomorrow! And white. It and comes out. I am so excited. I am... I don't even know. I'm beyond excited. How many songs? It's going to be 13 altogether. Yay! 13 is your lucky number. Right. This is my heart. This right, is my right. second baby. Of course. And I want everyone to like my baby. Because I think my first baby was perfect. But I'm older <laughs> now. So I'm going to raise this child a little different. You know? Oh. And that's the way I look at my albums. That's the way I look at my projects. What is your favorite thing to sing about? That's when you can feel I it. I like to sing about relationships. Relationships? Love or just relationships All in general? All of them. Every part of it. All sorts of relationships. I feel like the thing with human beings in itself is the uh, the way that we communicate with each right. other. You know, and music music um, is something that that it, it moves past the ears and it touches the soul. Right. And you don't you don't forget the things you feel. You will forget what you see, but you never forget a feeling. And any of my music, I strive to have emotion and emotion in it that moves people. But most people have some sort of relationship, whether it's with the parent, whether it's the lack thereof, you know, love, hate, hurt, you know, um, anything, anything, sex, whatever, anything dealing with emotions, and those usually happen within relationships, some form of relationship. And I like to, I like to sing about those things. So whenever you're singing and you're performing and a feeling comes over you, you know, like when you start to cry and stuff. Can you sing when you cry? Because Beyonce goes, I love you. But she still sound all angelic and stuff. When I'm crying and I'm sinking, I can't, I yeah, can't if sink. If I'm, if I'm tearing, <laughs> I can uh -huh. sing through it. If I'm crying, um, at my last show, my mom passed away on November 12th. Mm -hmm. I had a show, was it November 14th? Like it was two days after she passed and I was still planning the funeral and dealing with everything. And I performed and I just, I was like, you know, I'm good money. I had everybody do a moment of silence before I did Raining in My Room and dedicated That's, it to her. See, why you, you should have did a hip-hop song. And <laughs> but Raining in My Room was the new single. I just right. released it. You know, it was the song that she told me. She told me, baby, you got to put that out. That's your hit. That's right. what she told me. I said, okay, mommy, you got it. You know, and everyone loves it. But I was singing it, and by the time I got to the bridge, I was... I broke down so bad. You and everybody so bad, you in the audience, cry. Yeah. Everybody in the audience was crying. It was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. It was insane. But I, I remember I could barely sing through it. Like, <laughs> you know, once the tears, the tears, they were just like, I, like I'm talking to people and the tears are like running like water. And I'm just like, cause you, <laughs> uh, I'm stupid. I'm crying. <laughs> I was gone. You making me cry for real? No, You're so it's... stupid. Look somewhere else. <laughs> Coco Sarai, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, so much for having me. Show. I had so much fun. You're tuned in to Mo Brown Shake at the Demon Brown Show. And Coco Sarai. You supposed to sing something. You can't get it though. I don't want to do that.